The heroine of today's video needs no introduction. You will recognize her, or rather her voice from a thousand, even with your eyes closed. Yes, you understood everything correctly. Today we will talk about the famous tennis player of the highest rank Maria Sharapova. I will tell you about the path that she overcame on the way to fame and what she eventually achieved. You are on the channel 100 Years of Sports and we are starting. Maria Yurievna Sharapova was born in April 1987 in the then Soviet city of Nyagin, where her parents Yuri and Elena Sharapov moved to after the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Young Masha received her first tennis racket as a gift for her fourth birthday from the father of another Russian tennis star Yevgeny Kafelnikov. In 1993, Masha met with the famous tennis player Martina Navratilova, who noted Masha's excellent hand-eye coordination and recommended her parents to send their daughter to the Nick Boletieri Tennis Academy. I already mentioned this academy in a video about Anna Kornikova, which was released recently on our channel. And if you are interested in knowing the history of Nick Boletieri and his academy, write about it in the comments. Sharapova's father, Yuri, is an incredibly selfless person who, in my subjective opinion, deserves a monument. In 1994, Yuri, having borrowed a large amount of money, went with Masha to Florida, where the aforementioned academy is located. But Maria was still too young to enter, and her father took on any job to pay for her daughter's training before admission. But in 1995, Sharapova finally signed a contract with the Academy and received a scholarship of $35,000 a year, which of course allowed her father to relax a bit. Sharapova's name was first heard by the world of tennis after she won the Eddie Her International Junior Championship in 2000. And already in 2001, at the age of only 14, Maria performed at the Pacific Life Open, her first professional WTA tournament. At the tournament, the tennis player defeated Aubrey Ribner before losing to Monica Seles in the second round. But in case you didn't know, tennis has a limit for juniors on the number of professional WTA tournaments they can enter. So at that time, at the age of 14, Maria could play only eight tournaments. This rule was established by the ITF, the supreme body of world tennis, in order to preserve the physical and, most importantly, the psychological health of young athletes. That is why Maria had to return to the youth tournament bracket and continue to hone her skills. And she continued, rising by the end of the year to sixth place in the ITF ranking among juniors. During that year, she won three tournaments and competed in the finals of five more. He also became the youngest junior to reach the final of the Australian Open in its history. The 2003 season was Sharapova's first full season. This season, Maria defeated world number 11 Yelena Dokic and also received her first two WTA titles, winning the Japanese Open and the Quebec Open. This allowed Sharapova to enter the top 50 best tennis players according to the WTA and also received the title of Rookie of the Year. The next season for Maria began with an offensive defeat from Anastasia Moschina in the third round of the Australian Open. But later, the tennis player got together and won the title at the Birmingham Classic. She also entered the top 20 of the WTA World Rankings, reaching the third round at the Qatar Telecom German Open and Internationale BNL d'Italia tournaments, both of which are first-tier tournaments. At the last of them, she defeated the 10th racket of the world, Elena Dementieva. Then it happened to Wimbledon. Defeating A.I. Sugiyama, A.I. Sugiyama, Sharapova advanced to the semifinals, where upset the fifth racket of the world Lindsay Davenport and went to the final. And then something happened that no one expected. In the final, Maria easily dealt with the one whose name has become a household name for the world of tennis and received her first Grand Slam title. And Serena Williams did not even have time to understand how she lost. The next day, the media was flooded with Maria Mania. 
Every publication, every TV channel was in a hurry to tell the whole world about the 17-year-old Maria Sharapova, who defeated the famous tennis machine Serena Williams and became the third youngest woman to win the Wimbledon title, behind only Lottie D.O.D. and Martina Hingis. This victory allowed Maria to enter the top 10 rankings for the first time. At the end of the same season, Sharapova defeated the younger Williams once more in the WTA Tour final by 4-6, 6-2, and 6-4. But Serena was not going to leave everything like that. Maria became for her like a red rag for a bull, and in early 2005 she bounced back in the semifinals of the Australian Open, not allowing Maria to win and climb to the third line of the world ranking. But Sharapova did not sit still, having won the Torrey Pan Pacific Open and the Qatar Total Open in a row, she still managed to take the coveted third line taken by Serena. For the entire 2005 season, Maria reached the final of every Grand Slam without winning a single one. But in September, she was able to get around the current world number one Lindsay Davenport. Taking her place, Sharapova was able to hold the first line for six weeks before losing the title to Davenport again due to injury. In 2007, Maria lost to Serena Williams in the final of the Australian Open. But the fact that the current leader of the rating, Justine Hennen, for some reason, refused to travel to Australia allowed Sharapova to once again take the first line of the world ranking. As a result, after losing due to a hamstring strain to the Indian Wells Masters, just seven weeks later she had to return the title to Justine Hennen. Two weeks later, Maria met the Williams family at the Miami Open. And if she easily cut the older Venus into meatballs, then the younger Serena again turned out to be too tough for Mary. Looking ahead, I want to say that after two losses to Maria in 2004, Serena said, I will not lose to this little bitch again. And she fulfilled her promise, the rivals were implacable enemies and met on the court 19 more times, but Serena emerged victorious from all of them. Who knows, maybe this figure would have grown to 20, but in the fourth round of the French Open in 2018, Serena refused to meet with Sharapova, citing health problems. Very hard, because I love to play with Maria. I'm always looking forward to this match. This is a big disappointment, but after the birth of my daughter, I made a promise to myself that I should not go out on the court if I was not at least 50% ready. After reading the book, Williams reacted, as a fan, I was delighted when this book saw the light of day. I was very happy for Mary. It turned out that in the book a lot is written about me. It surprised me, to be honest. I did not expect to read so much about myself, and not everything there is true. But let's continue. After a shoulder injury in 2007, Maria struggled to stay in the top five. But having recovered, she returned to the court in time for the Australian Open. As a result, without losing a single set for the entire championship, Sharapova won her third Grand Slam title. And after the unexpected end of the career of the already mentioned reigning champion Justine Hennen, she completely topped the rating. But this time, she couldn't hold him for long. The shoulder injury continued to bother Maria, and by the end of 2008, it became clear that she needed medical intervention to repair a rotator cuff tear. The tennis player finished the year on the ninth line of the ranking. The rehabilitation took 10 months, as a result of which Maria was unable to travel to the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. Also, during the rehabilitation, Sharapova dropped out of the top 100, dropping to 123rd place. Only by the US Open Maria managed to return to the 29th line, but in the third round the young Melanie Uden upset her. This was the second time that Maria lost to a teenager, she accepted the last defeat at the same tournament from Poland's Agnieszka Radwanska. This unfortunate defeat shifted her two lines down. For the rest of the 2009 season, Maria tried to return at least to the top 10, but in the end, she became only the 14th. The next season was not crowned with success, as a result of which, Maria dropped another four lines down. 
In the 2011 season, Maria managed to return to the top 10, breaking through to the semifinals of the Australian Open. At the Wimbledon Championships, Sharapova did not lose a single set on the way to the final, but in the end, she gave the victory to Petra Kivitova. It was her first Grand Slam final in over three years. Thanks to a series of successful performances, the tennis player managed to finish the year on the fourth line of the ranking. At the beginning of 2012, Maria managed to reach the quarterfinals of the Open Gaze de France, which allowed her to rise to the second line of the ranking. At the French Open, which took place from May to June of the same year, Maria Sharapova defeated Alexandra Cadenza, Ayumi Morita, Peng Shui, Clara Kukalova, Kaya Kanipi, Petra Kivitova on her way, and having finished with Sarah Arani in the final, the famous tennis player took her fourth career Grand Slam title and regained the title of the best tennis player in the world. After her triumphant return, Sharapova traveled to London for the 2012 Olympics, where she became the first Russian athlete to be honored as the team's flag bearer. Without straining, Maria reached the final, where she met with her longtime rival Serena Williams and, having received her eighth defeat, left the silver of the Olympics. 2013 began for Sharapova with second place at the Australian Open. At the Indian Wells Tournament, in just one hour and 20 minutes, Maria dealt with Caroline Wozniacki, securing the second line of the world ranking. But then she lost to Serena Williams in the finals of the Sony Open, the Mutua Madrid Open, and the French Open. And at the end of the year, she generally withdrew from the US Open due to a repeated shoulder injury, finishing the season in fourth place in the rankings. Do not worry, Maria quickly healed and with a series of successful performances by the end of the next season in 2014, she settled on the second line of the rating, right behind her longtime rival Serena Williams. 2015 began for Sharapova with a tough win over Anna Ivanovic at a tournament in Brisbane, Australia. Then the fourth Australian Open final in Maria's career took place, but the indomitable car of Serena Williams again took away her victory. For almost the entire 2016, Sharapova again suffered from a shoulder injury, and at the end she was completely disqualified for using meldonium. Let me remind you that meldonium was banned for athletes on January 1st, 2016, and therefore Sharapova's disqualification is considered nothing more than the result of a political crisis in Russian-American relations. Maria Sharapova returned in April 2017. She was not allowed to play in WTA tournaments for a whole year, and she celebrated her return by reaching the semifinals at the Porsche Grand Prix. But only by the end of the year, she managed to return to the top 100, the next 2018 was also not very successful, but despite this, by the end of the year, Maria managed to climb to 29th place in the ranking. At the beginning of 2019, Sharapova celebrated her 800th match in her career with a victory over Tamiya Bajinski. But a recurring shoulder injury prevented her from competing in most of the year's championships, as a result of which she ended the year with only 131st place. On February 26, 2020, Sharapova announced her retirement from tennis. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Sharapova said, I'm new to this, so please forgive me. Tennis, I say goodbye. But as I begin my next chapter, I want anyone who dreams of being successful at anything to know that doubt and judgment are inevitable. You will fail hundreds of times and the world will be watching you. Accept it. Trust yourself. I promise you that you will win. Sharapova was an aggressive offensive player. She always tried to impose her pace of play on her opponent. But her aggressive, high-risk playstyle meant that she could generate not only high numbers of both wins, but also unforced errors. Sharapova's biggest weapon was her backhand, which was described as one of the best in tennis after her retirement. In total, during her career, Maria Sharapova won 39 WTA tournaments, 36 of which she won in singles. Despite the fact that Maria has been living in the United States since 1994, she did not renounce Russian citizenship. 
According to her, this is due to the fact that she has relatives in Russia, and she values the connection with them very much, and also values the rich cultural heritage of her homeland. Thanks to her exhilarating career in tennis, Maria has been able to secure the support of major commercial sponsors. Porsche, Motorola, Land Rover, Canon, Tiffany, and Gatorade, just to name a few. From her triumph in 2004 until 2016, Forbes magazine named Sharapova the highest paid female athlete in the world. And in 2011, she generally became the only representative of the fair sex in the top 50 most expensive athletes in the world. Sharapova also proved herself to be a fairly successful businessman. In 2010, Sharapova launched her own line of tennis clothing, the Nike Maria Sharapova Collection. In addition, she designed shoes and bags for Cole Haan. Her signature flats are among the best selling of the entire brand. But that's not all. In 2012, Maria launched her Sugarpova confectionery brand, which grew to $20 million in sales by 2019. They invested in the sunscreen brand Supergoop, which was later acquired by Blackstone. Other companies Sharapova has invested in include UFC, Tonal, Public.com, MoonPay, Clio Snacks. In April 2022, Sharapova also became a board member of the fashion brand Monkler. Maria also acts as an advisor to Naked Retail and Bright Brands. High earnings allowed Maria Sharapova to pay great attention to charity. She donated $100,000 to projects to clean up the Chernobyl nuclear accident. She also fully sponsored the education of several dozen students from the disaster-affected regions of Belarus. She helped the Florida Foundation raise money for hurricane relief. In July 2008, Sharapova sent a DVD message to a memorial service for cancer dead Emily Bales, who was tossing a coin before the 2004 Wimbledon final, which Maria won. Coming to the end, I want to note the incredible beauty of Mary, although you yourself have probably already noticed this. From 2002 until 2006, Maxim magazine named Sharapova the hottest female athlete in the world. In April 2005, People magazine named her one of the 50 most beautiful celebrities in the world. She posed for a six-page bikini photo shoot in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue alongside 25 supermodels. And in a poll by British magazine FHM, she was voted the seventh most desirable bride based on both wealth and looks. Maria Sharapova's relentless pursuit of excellence both on and off the court has left an indelible mark on the world of tennis. And despite the fact that she has already completed her career, she will continue to influence the younger generations of tennis stars for a long time to come.